Good day folks, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. I'm going to walk you through a little DNS fine-tuning slash issue that I ran into along with the interesting conversation we had with the client. So they were complaining that every once in a while things seem to stutter when they're on the internet and they didn't know if it was bandwidth or packet loss, all that kind of good stuff. And I said, well, let's just go to a machine and we'll just basically surf the internet, catch a couple of packets and see what it looks like. And they said, all right. So this is what we ended up with, and I'm just going to show you some th some thoughts as I go through it, and some tips and tricks on how to use Wireshark. So as we're in Wireshark here, first thing I wanted to do was uh, just make this a little bigger, and I always joke, anybody over the age of 30 might want the font a little bit bigger, there we go. I also have a filter here for the Ethernet address of the client and the protocol DNS, and the reason why I did that, and it's an OR, right, so this Mac OR DNS. I wanted to see the DNS packets coming out, and I just want to see the client stuff, but I did not want to see all the space junk flying around their network. So this filter really helps narrow things down. Now I went to the techfirm.com, and of course nobody goes there. <laughs> so I thought, you know, it'd be a safe bet to go from this client, and that way I can really single out um, what we're doing versus what the machine may be doing in the background. So the first thing I saw, uh, as far as DNS goes, I can see, um, the IP of the client going to this DNS server and it's a standard query the techfirm.com so uh, the first thing I asked them is this your DNS server and the network guy said that doesn't look familiar to me and and I said alright so the first thing we did was um, I went to NS lookup right from the command prompt and it said uh, the address is 10.44.10.54 I said alright so let's just try to resolve to google.com and it said can't find Google no response from server and I thought that's weird the next thing that goes out uh, it's unrelated it went to Google but here let me just find the next one to the there you go tech firm so that went to 8888 that's uh, Google's public DNS so within NS lookup here we're just gonna type server 8888 I'm trying to use as many tools within the operating system as possible because I know some of the uh, subscribers on my YouTube channel say that I can't install anything on my computer, so give us more tips within the operating system. So this is Windows 10, but it also works with Windows 8, 7, and so on. This is a pretty uh, typical command NS lookup that you can run on uh, any Microsoft operating system. So from here, I change the server, uh, 8888, and I'm going to type google.com, and it worked. See? So this is uh, interesting. And I'll also just type the techfirm.com, and... It's 74208236106. All right, well, there you go. So this uh, doesn't work. So I, I, I'm not sure if it's just part of DHCP or if it's statically coded. I don't know any of that yet. I'm just walking you through my, my thought process. So I can see I'm talking to 1044.1054, and this is interesting, right? If I, if I only used a DNS filter, I would not have seen this packet, ICMP. So... 1044.10.54 comes back and says destination unreachable port unreachable. It's a very important packet. So 54 is telling us that the port, the DNS port, it's not listening on it. It's not doing anything on it. It doesn't understand DNS. So it's actually sending back an ICMP error. Uh, what's really important about this ICMP error is if, if that's a device with a firewall, it probably would not have sent that out. And if there's a firewall between me and that device, like we were on different subnets, we would not probably not have seen that packet as well. So it's really important to make sure you position yourself so you could see ICMP packets if they do, in fact, exist on the network. Just don't assume they're not there uh, if you don't see them. So anyways, we go back to this one, the 88. We can see techfirm.com. It came back, query response. Uh, we want to use a, a slightly different time format just to see how DNS is working. View, time display format, second since previous displayed packets. So that's a delta time. So now I could see the response is here. Um, I could see this guy in the right there, the before. There you go. So that's the query and that's the response. Sorry, folks, I'm just muddling my way through this. And you can see that's 1.9 milliseconds. So that's pretty quick. That's pretty good. The question though is how long did it take from the first query that did not work to when we finally got a TCP connection? All right, well, let's do that then because that's pretty well what they asked me. First thing I want to do is get rid of this thing on the bottom. So view, 
packet details. I uh, just want to do one thing at one time. For the people who know me, this is standard, uh, my standard MO view. Time display format, seconds since beginning of capture. And now this is like a stopwatch from the very first packet. Well, I want to start my stopwatch right here. Right click, set time reference. There it is. And now the time's been kind of set from, that's my zero mark, all right? All right, so there it is. It's 1044-10202. And I'm doing a port 80 connect, sin, sin, act, right? That's what I'm trying to do. And that was 31 milliseconds after my initial DNS request that failed. So 31 milliseconds. They said, eh, who cares? 31 milliseconds. Who's going to notice that? I said, yeah, but you got to remember something. Every time you go to a web page, you might have to resolve 10, 15, 20, 100. Doesn't, I don't know, it depends on the website. You'll have to resolve many names to build that page. Images, banners, ads, whatever. Well, that's going to multiply that 31 milliseconds. So if we just had, let's just use a, a simple number of 10, for example. 10 DNS lookups to build a page. Anybody who knows that number is way too low and conservative, doesn't matter. So 31 milliseconds times 10 is 300 milliseconds, and that's a third of a second. And if you have to do that every time you click on a page, people start to notice. And as you have more things to resolve, obviously, that number just increases. And every once in a while, will it time out? Sure, I, I, I'm sure it would. But the point is you'd have performance issues along the way. Now, most of the time, this is going to work, but it's not working well. So I went back to the client. We dug into that 1044.54. You're going to love this part. This was a developer's computer who has a statically assigned IP address who statically coded his DNS. And that IP was a DNS server that they were testing a few months ago, and he forgot to take it out of his configuration. But this could easily happen in DHCP with old DNS servers or a simple typo. So it's worth checking out your DNS settings on your machine to make sure they're working optimally and you don't run into this kind of issue. Have a good day. Bye for now.